Now, after releasing emails that led to DNC Chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz stepping down from her controversial role in undermining the Sanders presidential campaign, Julian Assange is now preparing to release more leaked emails. And this time, he says they will, quote, provide enough evidence to indict Hillary Clinton. Assange also made it clear there is no evidence of Russian involvement in the email hack, despite the Clinton campaign's claims. For details on this story, we go now to Laura Smith in the UK. Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, of course, is still holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy here in London. But once again, he's proven that he's not just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. Uh, not content with releasing 20,000 emails from the Democratic National Committee, uh, Assange now says he'll be releasing more material that he says will provide enough evidence to see Hillary Clinton arrested. He's given a series of interviews uh, in which he says that there's no proof whatsoever that the emails that he's already released came from Russian sources. He says that the DNC servers were ripe for hacking, that they're riddled with holes, and that documents hacked over a number of years are out there in the public domain in multiple copies. He says when the Clinton campaign talks about having proof that the emails were hacked by Russians, he says, I don't know what they're talking about, but they're not talking about my leak. Um, in fact, he's quite coy about the whole thing. Of course, WikiLeaks likes to create maximum ambiguity about where its information comes from. It's very hot on the protection of sources. And he said, maybe one day uh, our source or sources will step forward and some people will have egg on their faces or read into that what you will. Um, of course, he's at pains to say that it's not important where the emails come from. What's important is what's in them. And what we have now, he says, is the Clinton campaign using information about past hacks to divert attention away from what's actually in those emails. But that this diversionary tactic itself raises questions. Uh, Clinton here is presented with a political scandal. And what she does is blame the Russians, blame the Chinese, according to Assange. And if she does that in government, he says, that's a style that could cause serious conflict. What of the content of those emails, though? Well, the leaks, of course, rocked the beginning of the DNC and brought about the ouster of its chairwoman. What they do, Assange says, is show collusion at the very top of the Democratic Party to get rid of Bernie Sanders. He argues that Clinton, of course, may have won the nomination anyway, but now it's impossible to know so that her nomination de facto has no political legitimacy. WikiLeaks, uh, as Assange said, is set to release further emails, and it's clear that he thinks these could be the nail in Hillary Clinton. The Dow firing on all cylinders, hitting 25,000 for the first time in history. It's the seventh 1,000-point milestone since President Trump's election. So where's all the media coverage? Hi, everybody. I'm Liz Clayman, and welcome to Cashin' In. And while everybody seems to be focusing on Steve Bannon and claims made in this book called Fire and Fury, little to no coverage of a market and economy on fire. Is that flat out wrong? Our cash in and crew this week, Rachel Campos Duffy, Jerry Willis, Gary Kalpbaum, and Jessica Tarlov. Welcome, everybody. Gary, I'm going to start with you. You say we're seeing a double standard here. Why? Well, we spent the week listening to those famed physicians, Joe and Mika, saying that the president had dementia. You have psychiatrists go into Congress without diagnosis, saying he's unstable, uh, and completely forgetting about seven trillion dollars of wealth created because of the election and uh, since the election and i can just go on and on just yesterday two million it was announced two million less people on food stamps four percent unemployment gdp's in the threes because of the tax bill now six hundred thousand people having six hundred million dollars in bonuses plus a lot more going on there What's so important about all that? We need to talk about cheeseburgers and whether the president eats them or not in bed. Well, Jerry, you could argue <laughs> that, <laughs> that it's, it's called news because it's supposed to be new. And there are a bunch of competing factors here. Headlines, not just Steve Bannon, but also when you talk about the weather, this deep freeze. I mean, it's warmer in Saskatoon than it is in New York City. So well, could you give him that? Got, you got that right. But I got to tell you, at the end of the day, 
25,000 on the Dow. Who ever thought we would see this, right? Now the Atlanta Fed saying we're going to have economic growth in excess of the threes, unemployment at a 17-year low. Let me tell you how bad this has got. A couple of weeks ago, op-ed in the New York Times said, hey, we don't like this growth, too much growth. Ooh, bad, bad. <laughs> really? Who, who believes that? We love growth. Let's get bigger. Let's get this economy going. That's what most Americans think. Thousand point gains over and over since the election. Here's a tweet from President Trump, and, and he has been beating the bushes when it comes to getting the word out. Here in this one, he just said the fake Fake news media barely mentions the fact that the stock market just hit another new record and that business in the U.S. is booming. But the people know. Can you imagine if O, meaning Obama, were president and had these numbers? It would be the biggest story on earth. Dow now over 25,000. Jessica Tarlov, what's going on here? Well, I think there's a little bit of media bias here, and I think there's a lot that President Trump has brought a on little. himself. Yes, a little, Gary. Give me that in 2018. Uh, I, I, this is a story, and we know that the sizable cuts to the corporate tax rate is spurring this. I mean, investors have been waiting for this to happen and have been getting excited all year. And now we're seeing the profits from it, as it were. I think President Trump is certainly within his rights to be talking about it, but he should be talking about other things less, like the size of his nuclear button, he should lay off the sloppy Steve stuff, and just focus on this and the big win with the GOP tax reform bill. I would also like to add, as you brought up the physicians, Joe and Mika, there was rampant speculation that Hillary Clinton had Parkinson's disease, that President Obama was also mentally unstable. Conservative media goes after liberal heroes. Liberal media goes after conservative heroes. And and that's the way that it and works. They said, you know, they said the same thing about Ronald Reagan. Oh, he's losing it. George Bush. Uh, it's just it, this, this, it's awful, but it goes no, 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 across no. the board. The vitriol behind this <laughs> is unprecedented. The negativity, the level of nastiness. I, I think I it's don't know. Way the, over the well, top. let's talk about the birther movement then. If you want to talk about the le level of negativity, <laughs> I mean that's something that's it's, unprecedented for sure. We're talking about the president of the United States of America that he wasn't born here and that he's a secret and to bring Muslim. Out the birth when occurred. you ask people, though, Rachel. What matters to them most, it most right. often will top it with the economy and pocketbook issues. This yeah. should be Ab splashed across absolutely. the newspapers. Of course, we at Fox Business on the Business Channel side are making a huge deal of this because can you imagine if we didn't, then we're not telling the real story of what's going on. Look, Barack Obama would have killed for these numbers. I mean, he presided over one of the worst recoveries since the Great Depression. Well, not with the um, stock market. And it's just, I, I, and, let me clarify. The stock know, market but, jumped but 100% just, percent during his exactly. term. But go ahead. Exactly, but it's more than the stock market because you talk about what really matters to people. Um, over two million jobs created. He's, re remember, President Trump said he would be the greatest jobs president America's ever seen, and he's delivering on that. Not just that, we're seeing a renaissance in manufacturing jobs, jobs that the Democrats said would be gone forever. Remember, they said we had to go to a green economy and invest in Solyndra. Manufacturing's back. 25,000 jobs added in just December, 200,000 overall. And remember, in 2016, we lost 16,000 manufacturing jobs. And one last point that's important. He's breaking another another mold in the way we thought. Everybody thought um, having an African-American president would be great for minorities. Turned out not to be true. Under, under Barack Obama, uh, minorities fell into poverty. Their unemployment was low, uh, was high. Under Trump, we have record low unemployments, uh, record breaking, never before seen for Hispanics. Yeah, it for is blacks, a record today. Mining, logging, all these things that they said we're going away, have come back. Donald Trump's delivering, and I would be stinking mad if I was him, if I wasn't getting the credit we know would go to Barack Obama if he had Don't forget numbers. regulations. Uh, Don't forget regulations. That's an important Gary story. Let doing me doing jump this. in here, Gary. When the Steve Bannon story jumped out, that is very titillating for nearly every media outlet, whether it's conservative or not. They're treating David Koresh right now uh, uh, like a David Koresh from the alt-right when it comes to Steve Bannon, and that's huge headlines. They're trying to sell papers. Do you buy that argument? Well, look, the corks are popping off the champagne. Uh, when I drive and listen, when I turn on the TV and watch, it is 24-7. They are not reporting news. They are prosecuting an administration based on sources said, sources said. And with Bannon, I don't know what's going on there. He says one thing, and yesterday he came out and said the president's great, wonderful. I could care less, and I can tell you the 200 million people, most of them, who go to work every day to do better th for their uh, families and their children and their lives 
could not care less. They want to know that the administration is setting the conditions for greatness of this country. Less regulations, lower taxes are doing the job right now. And look, I don't know how long it lasts or how far it goes, but seven trillion in wealth speaks volumes since the election. I am ridiculously surprised about that number myself. And I've watched every market and I have studied every market going back a hundred years. Well, when you talk about hockey and you make that analogy, you know that Wayne Gretzky always says, go where the ball, where the puck is going versus where it actually is at the moment. Um, when we look ahead, Jerry, and you've watched this extraordinarily closely, we do not have a long-term budget right now that has been approved. It's true. We're facing another government shutdown. And where is that discussion? You know, you got to take the bad with the good as well. Well, we've got a long way to go on a lot of really fundamental issues. And my fear is now that we've hit January that the big, uh, you know, great thing that this administration has done is tax reform. And getting past that and doing more is going to be hard. They want to do infrastructure. They want to do health care. They've got a long list of priorities they want to go after. But it's going to take a lot of work. And when it comes to the budget, you've got to have some Democrats signing on board with you. That's going to be super difficult. I think the road is still uphill. Uh, and you better believe that Donald Trump is going to use his bully uh, pulpit Twitter account to get can it I done. Just, can I just say one thing? <laughs> if, if they don't do anything about the debt and deficits over the next 10 years, there will be yeah. a day of reckoning. I can promise mm -hmm. you that. We're 21 trillion. We're headed to 30 trillion plus. That is the next thing that has to be addressed. Right. And uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it will be entitlements. Somebody's got to start it hopefully soon. Oh, well, joy. The only way to, to do that forward. is through growing the economy. <laughs> and the only way to do that is growing the economy and also uh, reducing spending. So I think spending. Donald Trump and the Republicans have got a good start on that. Where? Yeah, the Republicans Sorry. are spending just like Democrats. <laughs> Everyone is spending right now.